morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and today's shout-out goes to Louis Chula. Louis was first to say first to one of my recent videos, and this one's a shout-out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with a review of a neat new drone. This is the Holy Stone HS700E. Now, what is the Holy Stone HS700E? Well, it is an upgraded version of their previous one, the HS700D, but it now includes electronic Im image stabilization. Now, this particular drone, it, its capabilities are very similar to another drone that's out there, which is the MJX Bugs 20, which I have right here. Very similar in capabilities. In fact, even the, the controller is very similar, so that's telling me I think I know who the manufacturer of this is for, Hol for Holy Stone. Holy Stone, in general, uh, has other manufacturers produce drones for them under contract. And then what's the advantage of a Holy Stone is that they are sold in the USA. They're available in the USA from uh, retailers such as Walmart and Amazon. So the advantages of getting a Holy Stone drone is you have better customer service in case you have a problem, you know, in, some, in case something goes wrong with your drone. As compared to uh, other drones such as the MJX where you know, normally those are imported from China. And that can be a difficult problem if you do encounter a problem with your particular drone, such as a defective drone. But again, Holy Stone is imported and made for Holy Stone, and they sell them in the U.S. so that, that you get better customer service, in my opinion, from, from this particular drone if you're going for it. Now, what's the other thing? What other advantage of this is? This drone does come with a nice carrying case. Let me show you that first before I forget about it. Uh, for carrying the drone and its um, accessories. It has a netting on the top for carrying all kinds of accessories in, inside this particular uh, case. Now, other thing about the drone is its propellers are quick disconnect, and the advantage of that is um, for uh, in storage and installation, or uh, installment of the replacement uh, propellers in case you do ding one up, and you get full set of spares, by the way, or Install or storing the drone inside its carrying case, you need to remove those particular propellers and they just snap on and snap off, so it's very easy. Um, the weight of this particular drone is 559 grams. Now, this is not a lightweight drone because of that weight. This drone will require registration in most countries, so keep that in mind, folks. But the drone is a GPS drone, it has GPS actually, GPS GLONASS both the U.S. satellites and the Russian satellites to provide for uh, very accurate positioning on this particular drone. It also gives the drone the cap uh, capability of automatic return to home and landing on command through pressing a button on a controller, which is that button there, on loss of signal from the controller if you fly too far away or you accidentally turn off that, that uh, controller the drone will automatically return to home and land. Or on low voltage, uh, if you have low voltage signal, the drone will come back and land itself. So that's the three advantages of the GPS GLONASS system. It also makes it very easy to fly the drone in that it automatically holds its position and will only move when you tell it to move, go somewhere, okay? So it doesn't drift with the wind is what I'm trying to tell you with the GPS GLONASS system. It also has um, brushless motors Let's look at these. Uh, brushless motors. This improved uh, durability over, say, a brushed motor drone. So these motors should last, uh, well, more or less the life of the drone, hopefully, uh, in this in this case of this particular drone. Um, also with that, this drone, it has an optical flow sensors. Let me show you the optical flow sensor on the belly. Now this optical flow sensor also has a similar capability to the GPS in that it will automatically uh, hover the drone and hold its position um, by looking at the ground directly beneath the drone. If you use this either indoors or outdoors. If you have poor GPS signal, you can turn it on. Now, the disadvantage of the optical flow system is there is no return to home and landing capability with optical flow. It will just maintain its position by looking at the ground until you, until you move it using the controller. But, uh, the, again, that will pre prevent drift away. You know, I... <laughs> You know, other drones, let's say toy drones that do not have an optical flow or a GPS will drift with the wind. This will not. So you can uh, fly this indoors or outdoors, either using GPS for outdoors or optical flow indoors and outdoors. It also has very bright lights on the belly here, these LED lights. So if you want to fly a twilight or um, even in daylight, you can see these things. If you you lose sight of the drone, you can possibly turn these on and re regain sight of the drone. Um, 
Keep in mind that though that these lights do not come on while the drone is on the ground, they can only be activated while the drone is flying. So if you're wondering if your lights are broken because they're not coming on while this isn't flying, that's because they do not come on unless the drone is flying. So keep that in mind, folks. Um, other things about the drone, we have a nice large 7.4 volt, 2800 milliamp hour battery. This gives the drone up to about 21 minutes, or about 21 minutes flight time. At least that's what I got when I took this particular drone for a flight. It did get 21 minutes. It is charged by a Type-C USB cable through a wall charger. Now, don't go trying to charge this particular battery using the USB port on your computer. Uh, there's just not enough power to charge that in a timely manner. Uh, you'll be waiting for days if you charge this on your computer. Use a good wall charger. I recommend a 2 amp wall charger to part to uh, charge this particular battery for best results, best charging results. Okay. Now, um, other things about the drone. Let's talk about the camera. It does have a 4K, a true 4K camera. Okay. You know they're not lying about it, <laughs> like a lot of other toy drones that use uh, interpolation to enlarge the video. This does have 4K and it is capable of recording 4K video. That's 3840 by 2160 pixels at 30 frames per second. It also records 1080p, if you wish, at 60 frames per second. In fact, that's what I like to record in is 1080p at 60. It looks pretty darn good. But it also has the capability of recording and actually recording to a micro SD card or TIF, TF card right there. There's mine. I do recommend you get a good uh, card to record at uh, 10K or, or at 4K video. Um, you know, your average class 6 card may choke trying to record that. Use a class 10 or better card I'm, is what I'm trying to say, folks, for recording this video. Now, this camera also has capability of up, down, tilt on the lens here via remote control using your controller here. Um, however, Okay, I forgot to mention, it also has electronic image stabilization. Uh, the advantage of electronic image stabilization, and it, record, it stabilizes the video. Uh, the advantage of that is, you know, over like a two or three axis gimbal, in the, is that there is no mechanical um, features in included to stabilize the video. You, you know, things, things can go bad with a mechanical system. They, they do break. Um, this has electronic image stabilization. So, you know, the, the drone will bounce around a bit and it will s still maintain video or stable video using a built-in image processor on board this particular computer or particular drone for stabilizing that video. Um, now, there are advantages and disadvantages to that. You know, like I mentioned advantages, there's no mechanical parts involved. But the disadvantage of that image, electronic image stabilization is there is some slight blurring you may notice. We'll, and we'll, I'll, I'll show that when we uh, include the video. And uh, the biggest, though, disadvantage of electronic image stabilization is such, say, if there's, it's a windy day and the drone is crabbing, such as tilting in the wind, um, you may get tilted video. Okay, and you will see that when we go flying, because I was flying on a windy day. <laughs> And you'll see what um, it is capable of doing and what it's not capable of doing. And one, things, one of the things that electronic image stabilization is not capable of doing, as of in this moment, is writing the video to level it. Okay, you, you may get a slight tilt as the drone tilts in the wind. And you'll see that again when we go flying. So I just wanted to bring that up. Um, okay, I mentioned the resolution. Um, I forgot to mention about the camera stills. This takes is capable of taking stills. However, the stills are just frame grabs of the video. So if you're in 4K mode, uh, recording at 4K, you will get a 4K video uh, frame grab of the video. Again, if you're recording in 1080p, you'll get a 1080p frame grab of the video. So just, in other words, the video resolution, or the, the photo resolution will be the same resolution as the video resolution that you're using for the uh, camera. Now, um, let's see, I mentioned electronic image stabilization. Now, I didn't mention the app. Now, this is capable of viewing FPV video. I mean, when I say FPV, you, are, you can see real-time video from the drone on your phone using the Ophelia Go app. Now, 
it uses 802.11 AC Wi-Fi to do such. Not everybody has such capability on their phone. So before purchasing this drone, I strongly recommend that you first verify that your phone is indeed capable of receiving 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, or you may be disappointed in that the app is not working and not receiving FPV video from the drone. So that would be a shame, folks. <laughs> but again, you, if you purchased it from Walmart or Amazon, you might you should be able to return it, I think, <laughs> if you encounter that problem. Um, Let's see, what else have I mentioned? Uh, I mentioned the Affiliate Go app. I mentioned the FPV capability. This also has advanced flight control features of Follow Me, Circle Me, and Waypoints using that app. So this drone will follow you. Actually, it follows the GPS on your, on your phone. It can also circle a position. And using uh, the app, you can press points on a map and it will automatically fly to those points. And I will demonstrate that when we go out flying in the field with this particular drone. Um, the range on the FPV video, I didn't forgot to mention that, is up to about uh, 500 meters. And that is dependent on your phone. Okay, if your phone has a very good Wi-Fi antenna, you may be able to get up to about 500 meters. But most people's phones, you know, expect to see about 200 to 300 meter FPV range on this particular drone. Uh, phones with better uh, Wi-Fi systems, yeah, you, you could possibly get out to about 500 meters uh, FPV video range. Now let's talk about the controller. This is the controller that comes with the drone. This controller does have a real antenna on the left side. The one on the right side is fake. <laughs> but the one on the left side you want to have extended because that gives this drone up to 1,000 meters of control range with the controller. So you can actually fly out of FPV video uh, range and continue flying. Now I do not recommend doing that, <laughs> but it does have the capability of going out to about 1,000 meters and still record video to that SD card if you so wish. But again, that is very risky to do such and, it, and is illegal in many countries including the U.S. to do that. So I don't recommend you flying out to 1,000 meters, <laughs> in the U.S. at least, with this particular drone or else you may run into foul with the FAA. So be careful, folks, doing that. Um, let me talk about more about the controller, though. It does have an antenna, as I mentioned. Uh, this scroll button on the left is fake or doesn't do anything. It's jammed. But the one on the right here that is used for raising and lowering that uh, camera lens up or down. Um, the button here is for starting and stopping or taking a photo or starting and stopping video by a prolonged press. The button on the right here is for adjusting rates with a quick press. You know, you can go from beginner to intermediate rate. And what that does is it increases the speed of the drone, in other words. Or if you press it and hold it down, it will turn on the lights or turn off the lights. Um, you start the motors, arm the motors, by pressing this button here. And you do that after you have sufficient satellites to fly and have completed the compass calibration, which I'll show you how to do in a field. And once you get the motor spinning, you can take off either by giving it throttle or by hitting the automatic takeoff and automatic landing button. By the way, I recommend using the automatic landing button because if you try to land it using just the throttle stick, it bounces. <laughs> You'll see that in the video. Use the automatic landing button uh, for accurate, more accurate landings because I was not able to get accurate landings by just pushing down on the stick because, again, it bounced around until it <laughs> landed where it wanted to land. Uh, this button here is for automatic return to home. So you can press that button and the drone will automatically fly back and land itself. This is the on-off switch and I'll talk about that here shortly. And again, you can turn the GPS on or off by this button here. Make sure this button is up if you intend to fly in GPS mode. If you accidentally turn off the GPS mode, you may be disappointed when you try to do a return to home and landing and it doesn't do that. <laughs> So make sure this button is up before takeoff in most cases, folks, okay? Safety issue. Make sure that's up, okay? And other things about it, let's see if I can get this to focus on the screen here. But this does have some telemetry. We have distance to the drone, height of the drone, battery um, uh, set or battery of the drone, you know, what its uh, charge is, battery of the controller, battery power of the controller, um, reception, quality of the drone and reception quality of the controller to the drone. It also lets you know if the GPS is on or off. 
along with um, the number of satellites you're receiving. Uh, you want a minimum, I believe. I, I would recommend a minimum of nine before takeoff. And also it tells you what rate you're in, either low or high rate, again, low or high speed in other words. Mode two control, which is throttle on the left. This does have capability of being switched to mode one. I forgot how to do that, but it's in the directions. <laughs> if you want the throttle on the right, you can not switch it. So just let you know. So that's a controller. That's the HS700D. Uh, what you get in the box, you get a nice instruction manual in English, German, and Spanish. You get a caution uh, over going uh, the cautions of LiPo batteries, what you should watch out for with LiPo batteries. You get a Type-C USB cable for charging the battery. You get the drone, you get the battery, you get the controller, you get a little screwdriver for maintenance of the drone. It's not needed to remove the propeller, so I, I'm not sure what they need this for, <laughs> why it's included in the package. And you get a spare set of props and, of course, the carrying case. So that is the HS700E. Let's take it out in the field, folks, and see how it flies. Hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here on a somewhat warm and breezy day here at uh, Pleasant Ridge Park near Girard, Pennsylvania, with the review flight, test flight of the Holy Stone HS700E. Okay, the first thing that we need to do to start this up is put it on a flat level surface, which is my landing pad here, and press and hold the on off button until we hear the ESCs chirping like that. Okay, and then we turn on the transmitter. And we verify that we have connection because we see bars on both the left side and the right side. Those are our reception bars. And now it's telling us to do a compass calibration. Uh, we're going to do, well, it did it for a second there and stopped, but we're going to initiate it by bringing both sticks down and to the right and holding them there. And we notice that compass, uh, blinking compass in the upper left corner. Okay, what we need to do first is rotate the drone horizontally. Notice that also the lights are blinking yellow right now, yellowish green. But we're going to rotate until they switch to hard green. Okay, now they're hard green. And then at that point, we go vertical and continue turning the drone vertically until the lights switch to red and green. So we are ready to go. Okay, putting the drone back down on the pad. Um, now the next thing I need to do is uh, connect the drone's Wi-Fi signal to my phone. And to do that, I'm going to need to go into the phone settings. So hold on while I do that, folks. Okay, this is the Ophelia Go app available in Google Play and iTunes. And before we take off, I'm going to go into the camera settings, which is those three squiggly lines on the right side, lower right side, below, beneath the red dot. And we're going to switch to 1080p 60 frames per second. Notice that it defaults to uh, 4K. Um, one other thing I want to show you is there are also camera settings. If we click on the camera icon, I believe. Uh, where are you? Okay, prove me wrong. Let me click it again. <laughs> is it the bottom one? The bottom one, the little pyramid shape. We have camera settings. I wanted to show you these camera settings, but here they are. You can adjust the camera settings, but I'm going to leave everything in automatic uh, for this for today's flight. We're going back to the camera and setting 1080p at 60 frames per second. We're going to start off with 60 frames per second because later on I'll switch to 4K because 4K is kind of intensive for my computer to process. That's why I'm, we're, we're starting with uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second. So, Okay, coming out of that, we have that set. And um, to start the motors, or actually I want to start video recording, we are going to hold down the record button on the left here until we hear a beep. And it should be recording, and it is, and it's showing on the app that it's recording. And to start the motors, we bring both sticks down and out. Or actually, no. <laughs> we have to hit the unlock button right here. Quick press the unlock, and then automatic takeoff. And we're going to check stability first. Making sure our compass calibration took, and we have sufficient satellites, 18. So, we do. So, I'm going to get into the picture, as I normally do and say, how do you like my shirt today, folks? And by the way, as you can see here, it's cargo short weather also. <laughs> I'm back in my cargo shorts and sandals. So right now it's doing a darn good job of uh, holding its position. I 
really like that. <laughs> okay, sticking up the cameras before we go flying so that my lips are moving in sequence, correct sequence. Okay, so everything looks good right now. I'm gonna put on my glasses so I can see this drone. And we're going to go up and out. By the way, notice how slow this thing flies. It flies real slow. And the idea is it doesn't want, or it's to help the electronic image stabilization of the drone. Um, if it would fly fast and jerky, that would get difficult for the drone's uh, EIS system to uh, maintain signal. Okay, right now I'm 30 meters out and 15 meters up. I want to go up to about 20, or a little over 20 meters altitude. Increasing, trying to increase the altitude. Oh, you know what, folks? <laughs> okay, one other thing about this drone. In the upper right corner, click that settings. It looks like a uh, gear. Oh, in flight can't be set. Right now we've got a geofence going, <laughs> geofence issue right now. But let's rotate while we're there. It's not letting me fly farther than 50 meters out and 14 meters high uh, because it's got the geofence set. And from there, we're going to do a return to home and landing just to test the return to home and landing and pressing the return to home button. And it should be coming back. And it is. Once it lands, we are going to turn off the geofence. Right now, it's set up for beginners flying, beginner flying with the geofence keeping it close for beginner flyers, but you can turn that off and I will show you that after we land here. I'm gonna have to let this land. We're gonna see how close this return to home and landing is also, automatic return to home and landing. Kevin Dunn, Kevin Dunn, is it gonna land on the pad? It's just a little bit off the pad. Right there, not bad. And I'm stopping the video camera right there. Video camera is stopped. Okay, putting it back on the pad and going to that gear icon in the upper right corner and looking for, um, there's the distances. Right now we got beginner mode on. We want that, no, we don't want that on. We want that there, but we want to set the distance, max flight distance out to about, for me, I, I'd like to go out not that far out to about, um, no, it's still too far. I only want to go out to about 250 meters or so. I'm trying to set that. There we go. That's good enough. And the flight altitude, I want to go up to about 55 meters maximum. Return to home altitude is 15. That's fine. 20 meters. I'm going to increase that. And um, hopefully that should be set. Okay. Remark return to altitude cannot be higher than the flight altitude okay and the orbit diameter I also want to set that to about 20 meters actually let me reduce that to about 18 meters so we should be good there okay so now we should be able to go confirm updating the data and we're going to restart the camera again and the video recording has restarted and then putting on my glasses one more time and starting the motors and automatic takeoff and getting back in front of the camera so I can sync up the cameras one more time. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Again, I do that, folks, so that uh, my lips are in sync when I'm talking in front of the camera. And there we go. Out, of, out again, one more time. This time we should be able to go to the edge of the road. That's what I want to do. And while we're up there, let's lower the gimbal. Well, not that far. Right, up, right about there and heading forward now it is moving very slowly out there folks again I want to go up to about 25 meters altitude increasing altitude going higher and the reason I do that is we should be able to see Lake Erie now <laughs> as we're going out by I like to see Lake Erie in my videos and Right now we're distance 54 meters and boys are flying slowly. <laughs> Again, it does that folks. Uh, the reason to uh, help the electronic image stabilization. It, it keeps it steady, keeps the drone steady for the stabilization system to work properly. 
Okay, we are out 85 meters, still going very slowly. 27 meters altitude, 92 meters. I want to go to the road. 100 meters up. And when we get to the road, I'm going to fly it back manually. Okay, we should be close to the road now. I'm going to turn to the left. Let's see what the R rate is. Turn to the left. Okay, we're not at the road yet, so I'm going to turn to the right. I'm going to fly over toward that corner area there. Boy, it's doing a nice job, isn't it? This is a nice stable drone. This updated version, this you know, the Potensic HS700E is an is an updated version of the uh, MJX Bux 20, which is also a good drone, by the way. But um, the advantage of the Holy Stone is that it's shipped from the U.S. <laughs> you don't have to wait for China shipments and. And the issues that you get if you've got a problem with your drone, I think it, it should be probably easier to resolve problem problems with a drone since Holy Stone is based in the U.S. But also, I think they're selling this at Walmart. Darn, that's doing a nice job up there, ain't it? Look at my battery power. Battery's still doing okay. Okay, from there, okay, we had a loss of. GPS signal there for a second, but from there, let's increase the rate of the drone. Um, I forgot where to do that. Oh, there, the right button. Holding the button down. Is there a third rate? No, low and high. And we're going to fly back manually at high rate. Now, notice how jerky it gets when we're going in a high rate. I'm going to fly back toward me and reducing. Altitude too. There it comes, in high rate. So we're gonna know. Oh, look at that thing move. <laughs> it moves fast at high rate, folks. Okay. So that's its camera performance, in low and high rates, and also at uh, 1080 uh, frames per second. Now, I want to switch. Uh, camera mode and uh, let me stop the video let me bring it back down one more time first get in the camera say again how do you like my shirt today folks it is now officially um, tie-dye season let's see if I can change this uh, camera while well, it's a, no you can't you got to land it again too so we're gonna land it again and switch to uh, 4k so you can see the 4k camera so hold on while I do that folks I'm going to manually land this. Let me put it in low rate. It'll make it easier for me. Going back to low rate. Yep. And going over the landing pad. And hopefully I'll be... Okay, there we go. See, at low rate, it makes it easier to... Okay, i got to hit that land button. <laughs> land in the grass, I don't care. There we go. Okay, and now, now let's switch it back to the camera. Uh, we got to stop the video recording. Stopping the video recording. And hitting that um, camera settings and switching to 4K. Okay, we're going to fly this one in 4K. I'm not going to go too far. Uh, what I'm going to do, folks, I'm going to try to include this 4K video. Um, it's going to be downgraded to 1080p for the review but I'm going to upload this 4k video separately um, without sound so you can see uh, unedited what the 4k video is from this camera so there'll be two uploads is what I'm saying two reviews for this drone one is my review right now and the other will be showing the 4k video so starting the 4k camera recording and starting the motors and automatic takeoff Making sure and low and going up and out again. Now I'm not going to go too far. I'm just going to go around the area to show the camera. Going up and out. I'm 
to about 25 meters again. Higher. Okay, right about there, 26 meters. And then fly around the area in low rate. To show the camera. Okay, that's 4K video, folks. <laughs> Downgraded to 1080p. <laughs> and coming back down. Yeah, it really flies slowly, folks. Again, reason being to help the electronic image stabilization. But it also makes it harder for beginners to get in trouble with this <laughs> in low rate because it's flying so slow. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to turn to the right. Still descending. Still descending. And flying it back toward me. Line of sight. That was our FPV reception. So once we get back, I'm going to land it one more time. And we're going to switch the cameras again. Back to the 60 frames per second. And uh, we'll try out the advanced features of this drone. Coming up shortly here. Nice, smooth, stable drone in low rate, huh? That's its max speed, folks, in low rate. Okay. Let's put it on the ground again. Again, I'm going to hit the... Well, is rather laggy there in, in terms of control, but hitting the automatic landing. Yeah. Try to get it on the pad, but okay. Now let's stop that video recording again. And going back to 60 frames per second. 1080p 60. Okay, putting it back on the pad, and let's get it back in the air. Starting the recording again one more time. Video recording should be started. And starting the, or starting the motors, arming the motors, automatic takeoff. This is a good drone, folks. I'm telling you right now, um, what I'm seeing so far, everything about this drone seems to be nice. But now let's get, give it the real test, the advanced flight control features. Okay. <laughs> Those usually become a problem. <laughs> let's see if they're a problem with this drone. So in the upper left corner, those four squares, rectangles, let's go up a bit higher too. Let's click that. And follow me first, we'll activate. Let me go a little bit further out because it's going to be a GPS follow me. Normally you want to stay about 30 meters away, but I'm only, only about 20. But yeah, quick slide to follow. Ah, it's rubber band in the way. There we go. Follow me is activated. Now it's pointing at where it thinks my phone is or where my phone is reporting it's at. <laughs> there could be a difference. But let's see. Also, let's sync up the cameras, too, <laughs> while we do this. So let's see if it follows. And what type of follow me do we got here? We have a DJI style, where it's like it's being pulled on a string. Being pulled on a string, see? Let's see if that pick up the pace a bit. <laughs> Going to this direction now. And now walking toward it. Here's the big test. When does it recognize that I'm walking toward it and go backwards? Okay, it's recognizing it now. Although it is a bit jerky, as you see there. The stabilization system is doing a relatively good job, even though it's it's really jerky, folks. <laughs> Going toward it. But walking away, not so bad. Okay, that was follow me. So let's come out of follow me. Stop. Now let's fly it over toward me again. And we're going to do circle position. I think I set it for 20 meters, so I want to give this some room here. I don't want to 
hit any trees around here. Flying toward me. Okay, we should be good, high enough. And at four blocks again, let's hit the four rectangles and hit orbit flight and slide. And it's orbiting a position that, if, let's go a bit higher too, appears to be over here. Okay, again, I have this set to uh, 20 meters. Be careful when you set orbit position, folks. Um, it starts orbiting, it assumes it's pointing at its center position right when it start, starts orbiting. So where it's at when you activate it is not the center of rotation. But I'm trying to find that center, I think it's right about here. <laughs> so that's orbit position, it's working. Now you can raise and lower the altitude. In fact, let's come down a bit, show that while you're flying, while you're orbiting. So, orbit position does work. Let's come out of that now. Okay, where are you? Trying to cancel it. Come on, orbit. Oh, there we go. And orbit position is complete. Okay, the next one, it, it normally does not work, folks, but we're gonna try and see if it does. Normally in lower cost drones, well, this isn't a low cost drone for one thing, but or the next one I'm gonna try is waypoints. For that, we gotta hit that map in the lower left corner. And uh, right now it's not showing uh, maps, it's showing our position. But with that in mind, let me zoom in as good as I can its position and my position. Let me move away from it. I want to see what the separation is here. Huh. Okay, let's hit the squiggly lines. I gotta be careful here, folks, because I don't have a map, but I don't know where I'm going <laughs> on this, but we're gonna put down a few points. So clicking the first one there, second one there. Now let's just hit that one, submit. See where it goes. Okay, and it's going to the first point, which was over there, not too far away. Okay, it's there. Let's click this again. Let's try uh, a draw. Okay. Oh, that's movement. That's how you move the map. But uh, tap to fly. We'll go the opposite direction of me, and then hitting submit and activate. <laughs> I'm sorry folks, I actually, okay, hit submit again. Going up a bit higher too, and then submitting. Let's see what it does. Does it come back in my general direction? Yeah, there it goes to its first point. So waypoint seems to work. Uh, let's try one more time. Let's try the second one. Let's go back over here, to here, to here, and then to me, and then submit. There we go. It's going to go to the first waypoint. Now you can adjust the altitude with the throttle, so if you see something coming up toward it, you know, you can uh, adjust the throttle, but waypoint seems to work. So that's great. Everything seems to work on this drone. Now, I bet you if I would have downloaded the maps before I started this uh, app, um, I would have a, a view of the maps. And the way to do that, folks, is to open up the uh, app uh, before connecting to the drone. This, this one's going to come back toward me. Before connecting to the drone uh, and use your uh, home Wi-Fi or your uh, data system to... Uh, download the map into the phone's cache, and then later connect to the drone. And it should still be there. Okay, so Waypoints does works, which is great. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, the next thing I want to try is bring it down lower. And 
those four boxes in the upper left corner. Let's click it one more time. And we're going to try headless mode. And activating. And also, before we do that, let's sync up the camera again. <laughs> okay. Which way is headless mode? I'm pushing forward. Okay, so we're going to turn it this way. And what I want to do is also lower the gimbal. Not that low. Right there. And then uh, push forward and up for the up and away. I like up and away. This one's a slow up and away because, again, we're flying with it in low rate for the stabilization system. And it works. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep going up on <laughs> to show this. We're going to do a return to home from way over there. Uh, let's see, the better, something. I can't read that yellow print right now because I don't have my glasses on while I'm doing this. But from there, we're going to do a return to home. Let me plop it there for a second, folks. Raise up the gimbal since we're over there. Going up a bit higher. And then we're going to do a 360 rotate around the area. Slow rotation. And it's doing it. Doing a nice job up there. Yeah, this is not a bad drone at all. This is a good drone. I like this thing. Um, should be good for beginners. And uh, even intermediates. Um, it's just an all around nice drone. <laughs> Done well. Okay, from over there. Yeah, you know, that's actually, actually, let's point away from me. Pointing, continuing to rotate. Okay, from there, let's hit the return to home. Return to home, activate it. Okay, this will be the second demonstration of the return to home. Let's see how close it comes this time. I'm going to let it land all the way, going overhead, heading toward the landing pad, which was over there, is over there. And we'll walk over to see it. So, so far, I'm liking everything I see about this drone. This is a good drone. Well done. Also, I want to. See, I can't read that writing. It's too small on my phone. Um, let me put my glasses on so that will no, 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 makes it worse. Because it's. <laughs> oh, by the way, look. <laughs> we'll touch the pad on landing. Yes, it will. A chunk. <laughs> okay, let me point this camera down at the grass so that'll help. Might help me read what the small print is here. The battery only supports the drone flying. 100 meter range because we're low battery right now so it does have a geofence but the geofence is pretty large at 100 meters which is good i can get those 100 or 30 meter geofences are just too short that you see with other drones this one's 100 meters on low battery so that's not bad speaking of battery where are we we're at half battery power so let's stop the video recording and the reason i did that folks is i want to do a show the camera or the photos okay the photos are 4k stills but i want to show what they look like um can't i start this manually with this no you can't start it with the sticks you gotta hit this unlock button how about manual takeoff <coughs> excuse me okay let me get in a picture here we're going to take photos this time going up a bit higher and uh the photo button is there so that should be one. Try another. I like my tie-dye again, folks. And one more, up close. <laughs> okay, Tia photo it took. Okay, syncing up the cameras again. Now I am noticing lag, lag in the video here. Oh, is that it? Well, just in time. <laughs> to demonstrate that. So that is the low battery landing. Um, it shows, yeah, that's it. So that's the flight time you get with the battery for the uh, Holy Stone. Um, it's a reasonable flight time. I don't know if it was 25 minutes, but 
all in all, it was a well done drone. So let's get the sun in my face here before we exit and uh, sync up the camera. I don't know how to do this. Sync up one, two, three. Okay, that'll help. <laughs> but give me my final thoughts. Well, the Holy Stone HS700E is a good drone, folks. It actually does a good job, flies well, everything seems to work with it. So that's what I like about it. So hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101, signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks. <music>